Hi, Neil McPherson here, Worksworth Gunroom. Uh, just thought I'd do a quick feature on um, chronographs. Some of you may have seen one of these. This is uh, the Shooting Crony, Canadian made piece of equipment. I bought this myself um, back around 2005. So around, in fact, well, probably a bit later, 2006. It was advertised as being computer compatible. And I do a lot of computer work, so I thought, well, that's handy. I'll be able to analyze all the data and put it in a spreadsheet. And it was a special order item. And it cost, back then, £85, which um, I thought was enough. It's quite, it's all made of pressed steel. These plastic bits on the top, but the rest of it's all pressed steel. And uh, it's got a remote unit here to be able to monitor what velocity it tells you. So um, I was a bit surprised. Uh, if anybody, if you cast your mind back to 2006, in fact it says, all prices subject to change without notice, January 2006. But um, it didn't actually come with a USB port or any facility to connect it to a computer at all. Um, the idea was that there was some of the lead that you could buy that didn't come with it that would enable you to connect it to a parallel port. Might have been a serial port, I think it was a parallel port. And um, it was an IBM PC interface. It says here, includes serial card. So yes, it was a serial card, which suggests that you actually had to install the serial card on your computer. Um, and comes with a DOS spreadsheet software for DOS in 2006. Seriously, they were selling this junk. Um, anyway, it, otherwise than that, it meant that I just spent more money than I needed to on a chronograph that didn't do what I wanted. But um, it does work outdoors. Indoors you need an extra set of lights, which I think is more common with most of these things. So uh, to that end, I bought this. And um, this is called Wild Shooting Supplies, and it's, <laughs> as they say on eBay, brand new in box. So I'm um, not really a big fan of unboxing videos, but um, I thought we might as well just have a look and then we can do a couple of shots over them and see how they compare and what it's like in use. Now you can see from the illustrations on the box here, this will work with a smartphone. Well, it is 2020. Yes, I would expect it would. Um, we shall see whether it turns out we need another lead or some other thing that we don't have. Um, it's um, not made of pressed steel because uh, we're no longer in the early part of the 20th century. Um, it's actually been made out of some moulding plastic. I suppose you might argue, well, it's um, not as recyclable as steel. But uh, what I did notice, because I did have it out of the box earlier to check whether it, what the battery state was, this is very stiff. Little battery compartment, very stiff. The other one doesn't have a battery compartment. You just, the battery's just on a flying lead. That's it. That's your lot. There's a little, there is actually a little spring. You couldn't make this up, could you? <laughs> I've forgotten this detail. There's actually a spring in there to uh, tuck your battery under. Because I suppose if you make things completely out of pressed tin, using a spring is the obvious way instead of anything else. Anyway, this is uh, no doubt made in the Far East. And plastic is the... Um, we have nowadays so if I can just get this to open and this is very secure here we go pop the Duracell in nice little feature I do like this it's actually got room for a spare battery I quite like that let's give it a go can I make it fit Yep, so there we are, that's that. I can see this breaking, I really can. It's, it's very stiff and I can already see a bit of a fracture line appearing there. So I can imagine this having some gaffer tape around it in no time. Here we are, so. Similar, it's a similar kind of thing, it's got a, works in the same way, 
bullet passes over this window, passes over this window, the, the machine detects a slight shadow against the sky and it times the distance between the two and works out what the velocity was. So other things it comes with are oh, there's a little bag. Ah, this is the lead to plug it into the smartphone, which will no doubt take ages to set up, but let's just see how the basic thing goes. So well, this is a bit different. It, these are three parts in this. They're a bit of a fiddle, I found. This looks um, a bit simpler. I've not done this before, so if I'm looking a bit like I don't know what I'm doing, it's probably because I don't really know what I'm doing. Not for the first or last time. It's certainly a bit less like Meccano to put together. There it goes. And dimensionally, very similar, isn't it? Once it's set up. So if I turn it on, we'll have uh, feet per second. Ooh. I think it's just running through a, a startup sequence. Okay, that's its startup sequence, I guess. Um, so there's this one. What I'm going to do, I've got some, um, I've got some Zimmerlang, which are long indoor, long case, low velocity ammunition, and we'll just uh, shoot a few and see how they compare on the two different devices. So I'm shooting with this uh, BSA Sportsman with a moderator and this is the quietest thing I've ever shot. I think it's quieter than most air rifles because these are very subsonic, very low velocity as you'll see and even with this small moderator they're very very quiet. So I'll probably be just off camera but uh, put a round over each of these and see what I say. So that's 565.3 feet per second and on the Caldwell 731 feet per second. <laughs> that's quite a bit of a bit of difference so let's see if these are just really inconsistent. Could be the explanation. Try a couple more. Six hundred and five point nine. That was more luck than judgment. Seven hundred. And again. Four hundred ninety two. That's showing an error. So 
So we'll give it another chance at it. Possibly it was a bit close. Forty-four, and I actually saw the bullet fall out of the barrel and down the bank. So um, the odd of US Zimmerlang isn't uh, winning the day here. Seven hundred and nine. Let's try some Ely high velocity, which um, is a known good quality round. Let's see what reason differences we get with that. So first the shooting crony. One thousand two hundred and four. As you can hear, it was supersonic. And now the cold one. One thousand two hundred and nineteen. So that's um, comparable. Back to the crony. One thousand two hundred forty-two. One thousand two hundred forty-three. So they may be starting to agree with each other slightly. One thousand two hundred twenty-two. thousand two hundred and twenty nine so I'd say with that better quality ammunition those seem to be giving readings within um within a few feet per second of each other and probably within the variation of the ammunition itself um, I need to use this a lot more and uh, to form a fuller judgment of it I've also bought this um, LED light kit if you want one you can buy one out of the shop we can stop them. Um, this is for indoor use, which I I never had it for this and was ne never able to use it indoors. One of the reasons for uh, this is I'm doing a lot more air rifle repairs and we need to be able to check what velocity they're going out with, particularly the PCPs, uh, so that they're not over the 12 foot pound limit. But I'll maybe do a bit of a review and illustration of that when I'm in the shop or in the workshop and we can see. Um, also, I'll be able to have a look at the equipment to connect it to the smartphone, which I'm not even going to attempt to do now. I'll probably me sitting scratching my head probably will make even poorer quality video than a, even less entertaining than this was as it stands. But um, just thought as I've got them both here, just do a quick overview and uh, how you see what they're like. Hope it's of interest. Bye.